Frankenstein's got a journal, Wolfman has a blog. Swamp Thing tweets from down in his bog. Pete and Nash read it all, and now they're trying to see what's going on with these vampire diaries. Welcome, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Vampiti Diaries, a The Vampire Diaries podcast. We're a guy who has only seen 21 episodes of the show, watches the series with a super fan. I am the titular Petey. Let's just say I put the Petey in Van Petey, but please call me Pete. And I'm here with my co-host and co-parent, Ash. Oop. <laughs> Bumped a little tray. Hello. But, but hey, what's up, Ash? I'm here. I'm hanging. Another pod. I know. We're getting down to it. I know. Uh, next episode is the season finale, right? Yes. Wow. I can't believe it. We've come so far. I know. It's been fun. It has been. I do want to preface by saying that we are recording this podcast during election night. Yes. Because our priorities are in order. (laughs) Because we already voted. (laughs) Yes. And so now you just... In fact, we're in in Pacific time, Mm -hmm. and it's the evening, so really, all you got to do is just kind of wait. Yep. At this point, so waiting. why not record a podcast? And we'll probably be waiting for a few days anyways, so podcast it is. Podcast it is. Um, the election night theme may tie into the game at the end of this episode. Oh, okay. Cold open. Cold open. People, we say this every time, people love the cold open segment <laughs> of our show. Burr. Where we... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, our segment, our patented trademark segment where we just talk about the cold open of the show. Yeah. Yep. I uh, was confused, Ash. We watched the previously on, and then I was like, are we watching the show yet or what? The previously on went right into the cold open. Yeah, it was a confusing cold open. Yeah, they just continued the scene almost with like, I think the next cut. Yeah. It was like a continuation. Yeah, they can't. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> That's breaking all the rules. Well, they can do what they want. They did it. All right. So Isabel mm-hmm. is talking to Alaric, right, mm-hmm. at the grill. Yep. While he's drinking his brother's bond. Brother's bond, of course. Isabel wanted to be a vamp. She tells Alaric. Yeah. And. She says she has no good explanation for, like, wanting to be a vampire and then, like, leaving him. No. And and that's, like, all he wants to talk about is why did you want to be a vampire and why did you leave me? Yeah, he wants closure. Yeah. And she's just like, this is what I wanted. I needed this. And he's just like, uh, I don't get it. (laughs) And Ash, is this good writing for her to say, "Mm, uh, I just (laughs) wanted to? Well, is that good? There's so much more of this show and so much more information to be found out. Sometimes sure. you're not just going to get the info right away. No. In this moment, though, she's like, mm, I don't know, felt <laughs> like it. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I said, is that good writing? And I said, I guess it's realistic in a way mm-hmm. because, yes, we're used to in dramatic shows, everything cause and effect and motives and all this but a lot of times in real life people are just like i mm, wanted to. felt like it i wanted to yeah. seem cool at the time <laughs> right you know so uh, maybe it is very realistic mm-hmm. and but also i said maybe she's lying and has a reason <laughs> <laughs> i like how much you thought about this one line <laughs> yeah i said so confusing and then i said she said my daughter elena i believe that's the first time we've actually heard that which we know that that is the relationship but we haven't heard someone say my daughter elena right and it was a little jarring yeah and especially for isabel to be like referring to her like his a daughter is like an affection an affectionate term Mm -hmm. and it's like have you even met her (laughs) and she wants alaric to arrange a meeting for them yeah alaric says screw you Seriously. And leaves. Yeah, she wishes out and ch- chokes him up. Chokes him, yeah. And it's like, no, you got to do this meeting. <laughs> I'm going to kill all your history students. That's so crazy. And I was like, his students will be history if she has her, <laughs> her brothers. I know. <laughs> this part was annoying <clears throat> to me because Isabel is this powerful vampire. Mm-hmm. Why does she need a Laric to set up a meeting 
also Elena wants to meet Isabel yeah. anyways. It seems kind of like weird. That was just like an end of scene, like they needed more meat to the scene. Yeah. And then I said, this scene makes me feel like there are shapeshifters in this show. I was like, is this really Isabel doing this? Mm. Is this an evil shapeshifter doing this? Because it seems so crazy. She just comes into the stratosphere and is making big waves. Mm, But I mean, but seeing her throughout the rest of the episode, I was like, oh, she's just wild. Yeah. They talk a little bit about why later. Okay, cool. In the show? In this episode. Okay. Then maybe we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I was like, really, Alaric? Your wife's going to play you like that? (laughs) (laughs) I just feel bad for Alaric. Like, he legit was married to her and loved her, and then he thought she was, like, murdered or kidnapped or whatever. And he's just been, like, looking for her for a long time. Yeah, Alaric. Alaric, It is. Alaric came onto the scene, and I was skeptical. Mm Mm-hmm. Much like... Matt. I like how you were like, he's he's only going to last an episode or two. Yeah, but maybe a three-ep arc. Uh-huh. But now he's a big old character. But yeah, he came in... Big su- and old. <laughs> a big old character? Uh-huh. He came in suspect, but we have grown some affection for him. He's mixing up with Damon. He's being friendly with the bros. Yeah, he's also a good teacher. Cares about his students. Yep. Father figure to Jeremy. Mm-hmm. Founders Day Parade and Float. Yes. It's going on. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Have you ever built a float for a parade? I have not. No? I have. Uh Uh-huh. In high school, I was on the student council, and we had to make a float for the homecoming parade. And I was very skeptical of this whole situation because I'm like, how are a bunch of us kids going to make a float? Yeah. It looks so hard. Like, we don't have any money. (laughs) We Uh don't have any materials. We don't know how to, like, build things. Yeah. So I remember, like, meeting at a friend's house who was on the student council, and we were like, it was actually a really nice house, actually, so that part was fun. But we were all, like, talking about what we want this float to look like, and I'm just sitting there thinking, like, there's no way we're going to be able to make this float. Yeah. And then... Some, like, dads and family members, like, contributed supplies and, like, basically built it for Uh, us. mm -hmm. And then we had the float. But I was like, this is crazy. So then watching the episode and seeing all these, like, groups of high schoolers meeting and talking about what their floats are going to be like. And I'm like, you guys can't build a float. (laughs) No. High schoolers don't build floats. It That, the whole float thing seems very movie tv show to me that's not something i have any experience with i don't think we had any floats in high school we did or anything but it's weird it's like that's not like a responsibility that should be put on kids you're like 16 17 years old and they're like here build this float like what i know if someone was like told a 16 year old me you got to build a float i would have like an existential crisis (laughs) i'd be like "Uh, that's how i felt yeah i don't even know where to start Uh, like i'm worried about my uh ap bio test uh i'm like i don't know how to paper mache i don't know how to hammer these things together i don't know yeah i don't know It's, it's a weird thing that high schoolers have to make floats it is and i don't believe that they actually do um even your story, I Even don't in believe. my case, uh-huh. yeah. Like, okay. I guess we would have, like, pretended like we made this float. Who knows? Uh, you put some crepe paper Yeah, I feel like they did some painting of some sort or yeah. some gluing. I don't know. Um, I do remember being in someone's driveway doing something, but there's yeah, make, no way these us kids made this float. Making, like, a sign that didn't end up getting used. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> if you were to make a float celebrating the Vampire Diaries, what would it be What would be on there? I don't think I can say because I know way too much about the Vampire Diaries. All right, season one then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have some V-neck t-shirts. I think maybe I can do, like, the Comet. Uh-huh, the Comet over the, the town square. Over the town square, yeah. But again, that's a ridiculous thing to say that you would make on a float. I, what I would actually make is a blank board that people stand on dressed like characters from the show. Because that would be the actual thing that I could do. 
Yeah, just find like attractive people from your high school that look like the characters. Yeah, yeah. and make like one sign that says Vampire Diaries. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> All right, Elena is chatting on the phone with Damon, and Damon is bantering mm-hmm. Ash. Mm-hmm. Says Stefan is boring again. A little exposition, like, what's up with Stefan? Is he is he wiling on the blood again? What's mm-hmm. going on? And Damon's just like, he's boring again. Uh, and Damon's like, have fun with Miss Mystic Falls. I did. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Damon. He's being a rascal again. I know. But he's doing it in a way where he's also, like, flirting with Elena in a way. He's absolutely flirting with Elena. But it's, like, nice to see because he's, like, jovial and happy, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, like, nice to see him that way. But then you're like, oh, but that's his brother's girlfriend. And then, yes, yeah, Stefan walks in at the end of that phone conversation. He's just like, hmm? Because mm-hmm. uh, Damon's like, oh, Elena called. And he's like. Yeah, and it's Stefan's phone probably. Yeah, on Stefan's phone. Mm-hmm. Ty. And Matt, my buddy Ty, and Matt, the shoe better. Shoe be- shoe better oh, not shoe better. Shoe better not get dirt in my bed. I was like, what word are you saying? Shoe better. I don't know, is that good? Shoe better. Uh but anyway, Ty and Matt and some randos have to design a float. They have to design a float too. I know, so many people are designing floats. Do we even see the floats in this episode? Um, we see a float not floating and f- actually falling onto Matt's arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doing the opposite of floating. Well, that's because these kids are making it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a rusty axle. And um, they called me rusty axle in high school, actually. <laughs> 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 and then Carolina and Bonnie, of course, are going to design their float, Southern Classic Elegance, Gone with the Wind. Mm-hmm. Ash, I've never seen Gone with the Wind. I have once a long time ago, like in like in middle school or high school. I get that confused with um, the Sound of Music. What? I definitely don't. which I haven't seen all of that. Isn't one of them like six hours long? Is Sound of Music super long? I don't know. I don't know how long the Sound of Music is. It felt long because I watched it a bunch as a kid, but mm-hmm. it might not be that long. It's good, and you like musicals. Which which one should we watch? Which one are you saying? The Sound of Music. Okay. <laughs> Caroline is trying to fix everyone's friendship. She sees that Bonnie and Elena are beefing. I know, and it's weird. Like, if I was Caroline and Bonnie's like, I just can't tell you what we're arguing about. I'd be like, yes, you can. Like, we're in high school. What couldn't you tell me? Yeah. Well, it's vampire and witch stuff, huh? I know. Do you think that... um Caroline is ever going to find out about this stuff? Yes, because she's going to become Dark Caroline. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Will she be a witch? Will she be a vamp? Will she be a shapeshifter? We'll see. But she will have dark hair. <laughs> Damon, Alaric, Elena, and Stefan have a meeting. Mm-hmm. Isabel is in town. Yeah, they're meeting like in Alaric's classroom. And Damon's like, okay, so they tell... Damon that uh, Isabel wants to meet Elena and then Damon's response is to Elena you don't have to meet her if you don't want to and this is another one when Stefan's like skirt and he looks at Damon like um yeah he I I wrote the note he alpha'd Stefan right there (laughs) yeah and (laughs) Stefan's like uh that's like a boyfriend thing to say not why are you saying that kind of thing I know I said yikes about that yeah and but Elena does want to meet Isabel. She does. And so Uncle John goes to Isabel's house. She's compelled some hotties. What a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess people, someone would do that. I mean, Damon's done it before. True. Ooh, Isabel and Damon. Hmm. Some similarities. Well, he turned Isabel. And she was, so she's learned the vamp life from him. Ooh, the vamp life. What if Damon had a uh, vamp life tattooed on his abs like Tupac? <laughs> <laughs> also, Uncle John, I thought he hated vamps, but he's buddies with Isabel. Yeah, and he was buddies with that other guy from the last episode, teaching him how to use yeah, that Match.com. M- that MTV VJ. Mm-hmm. I will never remember who that guy's name. <laughs> hmm. 
It wasn't our buddy Harper. Cody? <laughs> it, it was certainly something like Cody or something. So yeah, Elena does want to meet Isabel. And of course they meet at the grill because where else would you meet yeah. in, in Mystic Falls? Mm-hmm. You could maybe meet, because they use the same set as PLL, mm-hmm. Pretty Little Liars, you could maybe meet at the Italian restaurant <laughs> with, the, weird with the photo, I mean, the painting on the wall with the burned up old man. <laughs> you could maybe meet there. <laughs> but no, in Mystic Falls. Or you can meet at the clock tower from Back to the <laughs> from Future. From Back to the Future, yep. <laughs> or maybe a house from Wisteria Lane. Yes, or you could also meet at The Good Place. <laughs> yes. So... All the, a lot of these shows, all the ones we just oh, wait, mentioned. The Good Place is in Universal. I lied. Oh, okay. All the other shows that we mentioned mm-hmm. all are on this same, like, two-block set. Yep. Stefan is listening in from a distance to this meeting. This part was cute. Stefan is smiling. Like, Elena's like, are you there? I'm glad you came. Thanks for being here. Because oh, yeah. he's listening in, but he's not answering her from, like, far away. But yeah. he's just smiling at her and stuff. He should have been like... Yep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're good. You know? Uh-huh. No, I liked his no. little smile, so it was cute. I thought, yeah, but no, Isabel comes over. Isabel knows Catherine. So it's so weird that Isabel's daughter looks exactly like Catherine. She knows Catherine. And there's something going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Isabel even alludes to that there's something going on. She's like, you look exactly like her. And she's like, I wanted to meet you because of that the, the fact that she said there was a family resemblance or something. She said something like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Elena's something's like... Something's going on. Yeah. I don't know if that's a next episode thing or if that's a season two thing. Mm-hmm. We shall see. And Elena's dad was a teenage waste of space. Mm-hmm. Um... Oh, and Isabel says, why Stefan? Why not go for Damon? Or both like Catherine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then Stefan looks like awkward, like, uh. Yeah. Don't talk about Catherine like that. <laughs> oh, Stefan. Don't bring it up that I used to date her or whatever. Uh, as we get to know more about Stefan, he gets less mysterious. And I think that his uh, bad boy mystique is just dropping by that by the episode. Mm. Looking so weak at times. What? Getting broed down by his bro. Stefan, things aren't looking good for you. Oh no. <laughs> Damon says this Isabel, I think he's talking to Alaric, right? Says this Isabel has given up her humanity. Oh yeah, they're in the town square, like right outside of the grill, waiting for Elena and Stefan to come out. Mm-hmm. Cause uh, Isabel told them that they couldn't go in. Yeah. And when she was supposed to meet them alone. And so they're just chatting. Yeah. And they talk about how Isabel gave up her humanity. And this is the first mention of a vampire turning off or giving up their humanity. Yeah. Yikes. Which we see some of this behavior in this episode. Yeah. And, this, and that's the explanation to why... She was, like, so cold and weird to Alaric mm-hmm. and just like, hey, can you stop this meeting? And he's like, um, no. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and then Damon says that he turned off his humanity, too, and Alaric's like, no, you didn't. Yeah. Mm-mm. So do you believe Damon or do you believe Alaric? About what? About um, Damon's humanity. No, yeah. Damon wishes, but he still has, he still has... All types of humanity busting out of the scenes. <laughs> okay. He's he's like, yeah, I turned off my humanity, and but actually I didn't. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Also, there's a random "How I Met Your Mother" reference in this conversation. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Yep, they do random pop culture references in these episode in this show. Yeah. They did "Gone with the Wind" also, which both dates it, but also makes it timeless. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel. Once the invention, the device. Mm-hmm. Uncle John told her about vampires initially. Mm-hmm. He got her on the vampire train. To who? To a who? Isabel. Uncle John. Because they dated when they were teens. Oh, 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 okay. I was like, when did they talk about that? Yes, they did. She was like, he was sort of in love with me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 
And uh, and he knows about vampires through all the Gilbert Gurnals. The Gilbert Gurnals. Mm-hmm. So this is Isabel talking to Elena. She's like, you'll get old. Stefan won't. It's sort of a Benjamin Button scenario. Mm-hmm. Isabel grabs Elena's arm. She wants the invention from Damon or the blood will be on your hands, mm-hmm. Elena. So yeah, this is interesting because Isabel is basically calling out Elena for probably considering being turned to a vampire so she could be with Stefan forever. But no one's really talked about it before. No. But mm-hmm. Isabel's just like saying it as it is. And so yeah. we don't really know for sure if Elena has thought about it or if she's now like really thinking about it. It'd be kind of not awesome if Jeremy was having that struggle with Anna at the exact same, at the exact same time mm-hmm. Elena was also doing that. That wouldn't be the best episode where right. like Jeremy's like, I want to be turned and Elena's like, I want to be turned. Mm-hmm. So it seems like that may come down the line. Mm-hmm. Some faux shadowing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some five shadowing. But yes, and then she grabs Elena, he said. Bonnie comes into the grill. Mm -hmm. I guess Isabel leaves. Bonnie comes in. Elena is sad. Yeah. She's sad, and then Bonnie just looks at her, sees Stefan, and then leaves. Yeah, she's still mad. Yeah, she just, like, is seriously trying to avoid Stefan and Damon at all costs. Yep. R.I.P. Grams. Mm -hmm. Jeremy is calling Anna, leaving messages. Can't get in touch with Anna. We haven't seen Anna since her mom was killed. No. In the last episode. Aunt Jenna likes Anna. Uncle John's around. Asks about Anna. Creepy Uncle John. Yeah, asking way too many questions about Anna. How well do you know Anna? Uh, I know her extremely well, Jeremy says. Mm -hmm. Back off, Uncle John. Then Jeremy's like, why are you so interested? You creep? Are you creepy uncle? Yeah. (laughs) And he is. He is. Damon rolls over to Isabel's house. He's playing strip poker with mm-hmm. Isabel's minion. Mm-hmm. He's still like, that's classic Damon. I know, but I think in this case, like when he was uh, partying with the Zetas or whatever, uh-huh. I think that was him nursing his wounds and doing all that. I think here it's a put on mm-hmm. to, for Isabel to find him and be like, oh, same old Damon and like kind of... That's a defense mechanism of his or, like, maybe an offensive yeah. play of his. I think you're right. I think also it's because she sees him shirtless and they had a <laughs> sexual relationship. And uh-huh. it's, like, can it sparks some stuff that happens oh, yeah. in, later on. Yeah, they start, like, rolling around and stuff. <laughs> um, so Isabel tells Damon that Catherine wants Uncle John to have the device, which that's Damon's buzzword mm-hmm. as much as he's, like... I don't care about Catherine anymore. Mm-hmm. Whenever someone brings her up, he's like, I do care about her again. Yeah, exactly. Damon and Isabel, they're dance flirt fighting. Like from Zoolander, they're break dance fighting. <laughs> they're, they're dance flirt fighting. <laughs> Damon is protecting Elena. Hardcore. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's a semi-subtle progression of that. Oh, I was going to say, so my note is like, that relationship, yes, in the past couple of episodes, they've been bunning up. Mm-hmm. And You're the, talking about Damon and Elena. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the feet on the lap and mm-hmm. the bantery phone calls. Phone calls. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like that relationship was earned over the season. Yeah. And it was subtle until it wasn't. Right. No, yeah. I think it, like, they legit got to know each other and had experiences together and... Really became, like Damon says later in the episode, like friends. Or more than friends. Well, he says that... She's her only friend. Yeah. Wait, she's his only friend. And in the episode before this, he said he had no friends. And remember, mm. Elena looked a little upset. Uh-huh. And then he says to, oh, to, to Stefan, Stefan in this episode. Which he episode, doesn't even tell her. No, but he says to Stefan in this episode that she's his friend and actually my only friend. Bonnie visits Elena. Bonnie's there for Elena. And they chat, and Elena says, I met my birth mother. Yeah, Bonnie visits Elena at her house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they they have a little friend moment. Yeah, because they're still friends. Mm-hmm. And I had a question. Who's worse, 
Elena's mom or VA Beach Kelly? <laughs> Elena's birth mom? Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. They're both having their struggles. They right? are. Ty, my buddy Ty, and Matt building the float. Yeah. Great, great, uh, great C, D, E story this was. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they're trying, you know, um, Tyler's just trying to be friends with Matt again. Mm-hmm. And Matt's just like, I'm mad at you. Don't talk about my mom. You made out with yeah. my He made out with his mom and beat him up. Like, yeah. that's going to take a little while to get over. <laughs> but, I mean, I do think it's good that Tyler is, like, trying to, like, be friends again. I guess. It shows maturity or something. Yeah, it's better to try than to not at all. Yeah, my note was great scene, lol. Because it's <laughs> seriously so short. It is so short. And I think it's another one of those, they just needed a, a scene in between mm-hmm. the Bonnie and Elena scenes. Yeah, but also it's like almost the end of the season, they're either showing every character or referencing every character. Just kind of like giving a check-in with where what everyone's doing. Mm-hmm. Bonnie has Emily Bennett's spell book. Mm-hmm. Emily spelled all those inventions with magic. This was very funny. Mm-hmm. Jonathan, with two H's, Jonathan, <laughs> get your <laughs> act together. Uh, Jonathan Gilbert didn't invent anything, and I said, another example of a white man uh-huh. taking credit for something he didn't do. Yeah. In fact, a woman of color was doing it. <laughs> And he was like, yeah, I did all these inventions. Yeah, look what a great inventor I am. Actually, that none of them do anything. They're possessed by magic. Yep. And also, I love the description of the device uh, invention, whatever. It's a weapon against vampires, mm-hmm. which is the vaguest thing ever. Yeah. What do you think it does? Um, they want it so bad. Well, okay, it seems like... Hmm. It might be sort of like, remember in The Matrix? Nope. <laughs> uh, what is it called? A electromagnetic pulse EMP thing? Anyway, remember they pressed a button and those little squiggly squids that were flying around the real world like were all like, and they got shut down. I think it might be like an EMP type thing for vamps, and that's why... It's going to be dangerous for other vampires. Like, I don't think it's like a specific point at a vampire and they die or whatever. It Mm. might be like a... Like a radius? Yes. Mm. Every vamp in this radius, when I press this button, is going to go like those squid robot things. Okay. Thank you for giving a real answer. (laughs) Also, nipple buzzer. (laughs) Jeremy asks Elena about Anna. And Jeremy's like, you lie about everything. I know. She's like, what? (laughs) Uh, knows Elena knows Anna is a vampire. I know that she knows that I know. I know. But this is like a very abrasive way for Jeremy to tell Elena that he read her journals and knows about vampires. Yeah, because he comes at it like, I know this. And he's like, and I read your diaries. Yeah. And he's he only says that to her because he's like so flustered and upset that he can't reach Anna. Mm-hmm. That's not the way he should have gone about talking to Elena about this. No. And then I said, oh, great. Isabel is there, too. Mm-hmm. And Isabel talked to Caroline and got all the info about her friends, Elena's friends. I know, but I thought uh, Caroline had Vervain. Hmm. But maybe she didn't need Vervain. Maybe Caroline is just chit-chatting. <laughs> that might have been what she was inferring because she was like... Yeah, she didn't didn't stop talking or something. Yeah, which I assumed she was compelled in that moment because they don't say and we don't see the scene. Mm -hmm. But actually, probably Caroline was just like, oh, that's it. Oh, that's blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Isabel's cowboy friend crushes Matt's arm. Yeah. And then Isabel threatens Jeremy and whooshes away. Well, and Jeremy gets caught up. They take, they whoosh Jeremy away. Yeah, but we don't know that in that scene. We're just like. Yeah, you you do. Because oh, you, you look and Jeremy is all of a sudden gone. 
Yeah, but he could have walked away. No, not the way they shot it. They mm-hmm. they shoot it in a way where it's like he was standing there and he had a vampire right behind him, and then they're like, and then where's Jeremy? And then he was gone, and the vampire was gone. And there's just like a puff of smoke that looks like his outline of his body. Well, sort of. There's like an empty space exactly where he was standing. So Isabel did kidnap Jeremy. You're right. Mm-hmm. Uncle John is there, and he's mad and saying they're they're up at the. The foreclosed house. Yeah, the McMansion. Yeah, and <laughs> that's a good one. And Uncle John is mad because he's like, that's my nephew. That's not okay. Yeah, and you know what? Uncle John, our pug, <laughs> pug watch, <laughs> pug watch 2020. Oh, she's so cute. She's in her bed. I think it was new last episode or the episode before. <laughs> she's loving it. Man, if you don't have a pug, you need one in your life, like, ASAP. You need a pug, and you need to get that pug a bed. Yeah, seriously. All right. Um, speaking of likability with our likable pug, <laughs> they did some Uncle John... Uncle John defended Jeremy for some likability Yeah. before uh, then the minions beat him up. Mm-hmm. They were like, we got to make the audience care about this guy a little bit because he's been such a weird creep. The yeah. whole rest of the time he's been on screen. That's true. Back at the Salvatore Bros house, mm-hmm. Uncle Nephew, whatever mm-hmm. his name is, his house. Zach. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Damon and Bonnie, Elena, Stefan, they're having a little meeting. A little powwow. Mm hmm. Damon says he likes being a living dead person, so therefore he doesn't <laughs> want to be killed mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Bonnie wants to remove the spell. From the device and give it to Isabel. And they want to give it to Isabel so Isabel doesn't keep killing people or hurting people and they give Jeremy back. Now they're doing whatever they need to do to save Jeremy. Yes. And Bonnie says she's been practicing her magic. She does a little get the book off the shelf thing. Mm -hmm. And so Damon gives her the device. Yep. And... Bonnie takes the spell off the device. (laughs) And do we trust her? Does she know what she's doing? Yeah, I asked you during the show. I said, do you think she did what she said she was going to do? And you said, yes, you trusted her. I did. Ooh, I was wrong. (laughs) Spoiler alert. These uh, Isabel and her crew want the device to stop some vampires from a long time ago who want revenge on the town. Again, more vagueness. The tomb vamps. Is it specifically the tomb vamps? But what tomb vamps are still there? They're on the outskirts. Okay, that's what they said. Jeremy and Uncle John are mirroring the conversation from Stefan and Giuseppe. Jeremy's like, but what about there are some good vampires? Uncle John's like, no such thing. Yeah, right, exactly. That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Big meeting in the town square. Jeremy is okay. They say Uncle John hit his head. Elena and Isabel and the Salvatore bros and the hot minions, Mm -hmm. they're all converging on the town square at night. Yeah, to give Isabel the device. Mm Mm-hmm. And Elena, I think, asked Isabel, how did you know Damon was going to give you the device? Mm-hmm. And Isabel's like, well, he's in love with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then everyone's like looking at each other like... Mm-hmm. Stefan's like, eh, what? I know. And also Damon's like busted. Like he, he looks like he <laughs> is admitting it. Yeah. A little Grinch smile. Yeah. He's like, sorts. oops, secret's out. Elena says, thanks for sucking. Like, as a mom, thanks for sucking. Yeah. Elena's just, like, still sad that her second chance at having a mom did not turn out to be a good situation. But she rolls that into, like, sarcastically thanking her. And then she says, because the memory of my real mom is intact. But Mm -hmm. that's just her way of, like, being sad and disappointed. Yep. So Isabel came into the meeting, confused Isabel, and then started some man drama, Mm -hmm. and then left, and then Elena went to hug Stefan. Ooh, what if she went to hug Damon? Oh my gosh. (laughs) So she hugs Stefan, but she's looking over Stefan's shoulder while she's hugging him at Damon. 
And Dave was just standing there like, hmm. Yeah. This is, we're weird. We're awkward and weird now. Oh, man. Jeremy is still trying to call Anna. And then they're back at their house, I guess. Elena wants to talk. Jeremy read Elena's journal. And hey, I think I was right about Jeremy's erased memory. Mm -hmm. He doesn't remember it, even though he read about it. Yeah. Which, when he read it, the memories didn't come flooding back. No, he just read it, and then that's his new memory. His, yeah. uh, the memory of what he read. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was right. <laughs> Isabel, so Alark's at the school. Mm -hmm. Isabel confronts Alaric, says she's leaving, she's saying goodbye. She's changed, and the woman he married is gone. Yeah, and he's just, like, mad at her, and he's like, just leave, get out of here. Yeah, and he even takes off his ring, and he says he has no ring, he has no vervain, so do what she wishes, compel him. Or kill him, or whatever. Compel me or kill me. Mm -hmm. Kill me or compel me. I, say, I think he does say, kill me or compel me, which I was like, that's a good song title. Mm-hmm, that is. Isabel does compel a lark, or does she? <laughs> and uh, says nice things before she leaves. Yeah, she's admitting that she loved him and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think he may have had some vervain in his system. You think so? So you think next episode he'll remember that she had said that? Probably not. But, but the end of the scene, he was like, huh? Like, I know. And he was alone, so why would he do that? Because maybe she was still watching. <laughs> no, I, it will probably be never referenced again, but maybe I can hold a little nugget <laughs> okay. that he had some vervain and he knows what she said. Mm -hmm. Anna visits Jeremy, tells Jeremy that her mom Pearl is dead. I know, and it's like Anna didn't explain why the heck she wasn't answering her phone for a whole day. But then could Jeremy infer, though? Yeah, I mean, it's like she was probably handling the situation with her mom, and she was sad, but why'd you wait all day to talk to your boyfriend Well, your mom died? I would say that, like, that's a good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so once Jeremy hears that, he'd be like, oh, I get it. Yeah, I If know. he's a caring person. He is, but... I don't know. I feel like she could have been in this episode sooner, but I guess a lot was going on. She had half the week off. <laughs> <laughs> I know Isabel, the actress who plays Isabel from Not Another Teen Movie, Ash. Mm. It's been gnawing at me. Oh. And then I had to just look her up. I was like, so familiar. Who is she? Who is she? Mm -hmm. She is the Sarah Michelle Gellar Cruel Intentions analog mm -hmm. from Not Another Teen Movie. She's, like, telling the Chris Evans character, I think, to, like, have sex with her. Mm -hmm. And whoever the whoever the guy is, um, he's like, but we're related. And she's like, only by blood. Oh, yeah. Which, in Cruel Intention, is like, only by marriage or uh -huh. whatever. Which makes it less, less weird. weird yeah. yeah. But not another teen movie goes there. It does. Oh, that's fun. That's who she is. Nice. Good call. Stefan and Damon, the risk of sound. So, uh, Stefan comes out and is like, at the risk of sounding like a jealous boyfriend, and then does. Yeah, but appropriately so. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he should be super jealous. He's like, um, what the heck's going on? I was in this basement and you got with my girlfriend. Yeah, he says history will not be repeated. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll see. And then Uncle John could be Elena's dad, mm -hmm. which that's a Pete Diction. You predicted that the very first time Uncle John was shown. You're like, that's Elena's dad, right? Wow. And I was like, why would you say that? Like, there was no evidence at all for it whatsoever. But for some reason, you were like, that's Isabel. You said it, Isabel and... Uncle John had Elena, and you were right. Roll back the... Well, am I right? I mean... Yeah. That's the, that's the prediction. That's who they say in this moment. That's who they're saying. Uh, I recognize that forehead anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was a weird prediction that you did. The listeners must have just been waiting for this moment. I have been. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel 
Leave stuff for Uncle John. That's a very vague note. What's that mean? Isabel leaves stuff for Uncle John. Catherine I wants. I don't know. Catherine wants the tomb vampires dead. Isabel wants Stefan and Damon dead too. Consider them dead. She's our daughter. This is all happening. <laughs> yeah, they're in, they're having a phone call. Okay. They're having a phone call while Isabel is leaving Mystic Falls. Okay, and maybe she left the device. Yeah, or she left the device, and she's like, "All right, here it is. We need to protect our daughter." So now we know officially bum, bum, bum. that they had Elena together, and that's why Elena's stepdad helped cover it all up and adopt mm. her and everything mm-hmm. because his younger brother was the one who had a baby. Yeah, as teens, maybe. Yeah, right. Wow. Um. So, yeah, so Isabel's like, we need to protect her. Now she's all acting like she cares. So it's interesting because she was a total B at the beginning, mm-hmm. and then she was sweet to Alaric when he didn't know, and now she's, like, caring about Elena. Ooh, Perhaps she has some humanity left. Maybe. Bonnie lied. She didn't take the spell off the device. She's telling Caroline. Uncle John has the vampire killing device. Yeah, that's the end of this episode. And I was like, so all that Founder's Day float talk was just for that one scene crushing Matt's arm. (laughs) Unless we see him that floats next episode. If Matt isn't in the next episode with a cast on, (laughs) I'm going to be very mad. Yeah, so Bonnie's like telling Caroline, I lied to Elena. And Caroline's still like, huh? Why aren't you telling me the the real truth? This is very confusing. But she says that she said she did something and she didn't do what she said she did. Wow. Lies, deceit, drama. Hmm. Are there going to be some vampire deaths in this season finale? You need, I need, this is a big Pete Diction episode because uh, you have to pre- Pete Dict the finale. I know, but I don't know. I feel well. That's what it's a prediction. You have to guess. Hmm. You All have right. Uncle John with the I know. device. Yep. Okay, Uncle John with the device. His daughter is Elena. Elena loves Stefan and Damon. And Damon loves her. Uh huh. And so there's going to be some, we're going to get a lot of characters in one place. Hmm. And it's going to be Founder's Day. Ooh, Founder's Day. Will it be day or night? The episode is called Founder's Day. Okay. So there's going to be some big gathering. I feel like Uncle John is going to do something big, but then he's going to, Elena's going to say she loves these vampires and... Uncle John's going to have to choose between his daughter and killing these vampires because mm-hmm. if she kills these if he kills these vampires she's going to hate him. Do you think he does actually care about her then? Um well we did see that he cares about Jeremy and that's not his son, right? right. Mm-mm. Is Jeremy the birth child of Elena's adoptive parents? Yes. Okay. So I don't know. There's going to be some big... There's going to be big stuff. I'm wondering if Vampire Diaries does big cliffhangers. Mm-hmm. I would guess they do. Mm-hmm. But I would say that they probably wrap up some stuff and then push something else mm-hmm. for the next season. I don't know, Ash. I do think, though, there will be some vampire deaths. Our bros will not die. Bonnie is a witch. She'll be sticking around. Do you think anyone is going to be undead who's not who's currently alive Ooh, any vampires any new vampires mm-hmm. or zombs <laughs> <laughs> whatever i'm just leaving it up for interpretation i don't know I, a good finale would have a, a vampire change probably i don't know i really don't know because i felt like i had a handle on what was going on at some points but in the last couple of episodes, they've really thrown a bunch of stuff up in the air. Like, mm-hmm. is Isabel even gone for real? Like, she came in and then left right before the finale? Mm-hmm. I don't know. And, the, and there's mention of Catherine. Do you think we're going to get to see Catherine? Hmm. That would be interesting. 
ooh, maybe Catherine, maybe Catherine is the cliffhanger that pushes us into season two. Like all this stuff happens, and then we think that there's some kind of stasis reach, and then it's actually like it's actually a flashback to '80s in Chicago. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> no, but it's actually season two, cold open, 1983 Chicago. <laughs> and we kind of go back a little bit and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. No, but I could see like the last scene of this finale being like, yay, we're at the mansion and we killed the vampires or we got Uncle John to do whatever he does. Mm-hmm. And then we hear like, boys <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. And mm-hmm. then. It's Catherine. Mm. And then the bros just look at each other like, who? <laughs> and Elena's like, oh, jeez. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the tone of the show. Uh-huh. Oh, jeez. All right. Right. What else you got, Pete? Fangs? Yeah. You want to go fangs? Yeah. I'm going to go 1.5 fangs. Yeah. There was some good stuff in there. I'll match your 1.5. Mm-hmm. And then ask the game, the election night game. Okay. Who do you vote for for president, Ash? I'm going to give you a couple duos. Mm -hmm. You have to vote for president of Mystic Falls. Mystic Falls. Mm -hmm. Because towns have presidents. Yep. But actually, no. Of the United States of America. Who would would preside over this country better? All right. And there's a couple different ones. Mm -hmm. Head to head. Okay. Damon or Stefan? I'm going to say Damon. Oof. I'm not going to explain. Okay. (laughs) Shoes in the bed, Matt, or my buddy Ty? And really really think of their policies, Ash. Matt. Oof. I'm saying this from what I know about the whole show. Wow, okay. Caroline or Bonnie? Bonnie. Okay. And still no explanation. (laughs) Elena or Catherine? Elena. Do you agree with me every time or no? Um, I would, no, I would go between Damon and Stefan. I would go Stefan. Mm -hmm. I think he would have more moderate policies. I feel like Damon would... Maybe he would do some good things, but I feel like he would enact some very extreme things as well. <laughs> Matt or Ty? Hmm, I don't like Matt's stance on whether or not you can wear shoes, shoes in the, the bed. bed. Yeah. However, Ty's um, platform of being able to kiss his friend's moms. And beat up your best friend. Uh-huh, I don't agree with that. Caroline or Bonnie? Yeah, I would go with Bonnie. I feel like she's trying to do the right thing. But Caroline is also very organized and likes to plan stuff. And I would love to see Bonnie president, Caroline vice president. That would be good. That would be a great ticket right there. I agree. Uh, Elena or Catherine? Did we do that one? Yeah, I said Elena. Elena, yes. Catherine is a wild card. Mm-hmm. And then Isabel or Uncle John? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Neither one. I mean, Isabel would be rounding up hotties and compelling them, <laughs> and Uncle John would be creeping on nephew girlfriends. Yeah, and both not good. No. Ash, speaking of campaigns. Yes? <laughs> the Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign for uh, Horror from the High Dive mm-hmm. was successful, Ash. Yay! We raised the money. We got funded. That's amazing. We, we sold... Copies of books. That's awesome. Hey. Congrats. Thank you. And thank you to any listeners who bought a book. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Thank you. And if you missed it, the book will be on sale. uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, just different places on the net where you can buy books in a couple weeks, maybe a month. Yeah. We'll let you know. Yeah. Oh, I won't be able to shut up about it. (laughs) But, uh. I saw we saw a proof of the cover today. It looks so good. Looks great. So um, follow the social media things that I mentioned before because I'll post that eventually. Again, not yet, but yeah. exciting stuff for that book. Yeah, stay tuned. Yes. And um, if you voted already, good for you. Good job voting. Exciting stuff. Election night. 
And if you like the Vampire Diaries and or you are a young adult, uh, don't worry about any of that other stuff I usually say. Just tell your friends to listen to this show. We have almost a season done, Mm -hmm. season finale coming up. I know. I cannot wait to watch the season finale. Yes. So that'll be next week. Super exciting. Yeah. Thanks to all and to all a good night. Good night.